Get those dancing shoes ready. It's time to tango with Ellen Mandel's Oriental. Hello and welcome back to Meet Mozart. I'm Angie, that's Mozart. And we are so thrilled to continue our discussion with American composer Ellen Mandel and get to learn more about her inspiration for her song, Oriental. All right, so we are continuing our conversation with the lovely Ellen Mandel. Um, we've been having a great chat about all kinds of things about music, Mozart's music, and if you want to see that, I highly recommend you check out part one of this series. But for now, we're going to dive into her song, Oriental, which was set to the poetry of E.E. E. Cummings. Oriental, uh as a poem immediately struck me as a song and as a tango because it's sexy as all get out. It's very strophic. So you feel that it has that kind of a, a structure that could translate to music. And, um, the, and the words, the lyrics themselves or the, the words of the poem, which are now lyrics in my song, um, have again, that kind of repetitive structure that feels like mu you, you can use it as a musical theme and then elaborate. And then um, the fact that he has this phrase come hither, which is a fantastic phrase uh, and it can be every kind of expression, um, forceful, yearning, pleading, sexy, seductive, uh, angry, anything. And the poem also has all these different emotions. And, and the poem itself is expressing that the person is not responding. So it's, it's very layered, very interesting, and to me, very musical. And that's, that's why I set it to music. Right. And, and so was it this sort of come hither, this sort of push and pull that even though we never get to hear the other side of things, we only hear the one perspective, we sense this sort of push and pull. Is that kind of what reminded you of like a tango? Yes, and, and just the rhythm of the words and the, and the feel of the lyric, mm. the tango is such a sexy dance and the, the poem is, is so very sexy. It talks about love, but the, I spoke to you and you didn't answer. And also it has this very interesting um, verbal thing of the, so that makes it kind of antique a little bit, right. and which is, is ironic in a way because the tango is not that old, but somehow it has a kind of European feel to it. I don't know, I just felt it so strongly that um, I just went ahead. Also because of the repeating of the come hither, I wanted to make the different, I, I give an echo in the, an echo or sometimes a pre, a prequel to the phrase in the piano so that there is that kind of push and pull somewhere, although we don't hear the, the female voice. Actually, it's making me think that you could take some of the phrases that I put in the piano and put that into an echo voice. Hmm. You wouldn't be allowed to change the lyric, but you could just have something. It might be kind of interesting, actually. I'm, you're inspiring me. Yeah, <laughs> great. <laughs> well, yeah, or, or, you know, even without adding an extra voice, sensing that the tango is between the singer and the pianist, at least in certain sections, is a, is a cool idea. And, and I loved it. When I first looked at that piece, Every time there's like a strophic song, the first thing that goes through my head is, okay, this is gonna be harder to learn. Because when you have like repeated notes and rhythms, you have to keep track of, okay, now I'm here and now I'm on this verse and don't sing the words from that last verse and get the whole thing mixed up, right? Cause then it's mixed up. <laughs> but there's something about the way um, you took note of the way E.E. E. Cummings changes each strophe and the music really changes right along with it. So I actually never had a sense, even though I sense very much the, the strophe that's going on. And by strophic, we mean that there's um, a repetition 
that's going on musically and in the text, there's a repetition as well. So even though you sense that there's a repetition, that there's a strophe, you're so carried by the differences in each verse of the text that one sort of effortlessly flows into the next. And aside for a few occasions when I was recording it, I, I always felt like, oh, I know exactly what comes next. This is the natural evolution of the music and of the text. I am so happy to hear you say that you feel the development of the song through the different verses because that's what I tried to do is, is ex to express the different feelings of the different verses in the music. And they're not exactly the same. They're, they, they kind of take about the same amount of time. They're structurally in a way the same, but they're harmonically different mm -hmm. and expressively very different depending on what the, what the um, words are saying, which, which are very different from, from verse to verse. And then the ending is, is a big zinger. Right. <laughs> exactly. Well, and I find this is, this is just a me something that I noticed that I'm curious about, and I'm going to look at the music to kind of make sure that I reference it right. There's, there's sort of a, a, a double ending that I kind of sense like through the actual text of the poem, like the first verse ends on, oh, thou is life, not a smile, right? And every time it ends with, oh, thou is life, not this, oh, thou is love, not this, right? And so that's where textually we feel the end of, of a strophe. But then musically, it flows so seamlessly into the next strophe that I almost get a sense that that becomes the ending somehow. It's like, it's so seamlessly woven together that, that I just feel the whole thing going through. And I, I don't sense the end of the strophe in the same way that I would if I was just reading the poetry on the page. I don't know. I'm, if I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm just very happy to hear you say that. I mean, it's one song. So um, when there's something like that, I, I don't want to make the I don't want to make a final ending when I'm not ending because then then it, it, it just isn't right. It isn't over. So they kind of suspend and push on and go in their different ways. And then um, and then with the with the ending, which I won't say in case people would like to be surprised if they listen, <laughs> um, it, it, it is a then it feels like that's the, the, the final ending when it when it actually is. Right, right. It has it, it. It's it kind of cycles around, and in a really nice way that actually really fits with the text, I think, as well, because we see him trying all these. I spoke to you with a smile. I spoke to you with a smile, or with a song. I spoke to you with my soul. I spoke to you with all of these things, and we see this kind of continuation and this circling, and we get a sense of that with the music as well. That one approach just circles its way into the next. And yet each one is very unique musically as well. I, I'm just so pleased that you feel that. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, we're going to go ahead now and perform Oriental and let us know as a listener what you feel and what you sense and um, you know how you feel in this little tango. spoke to thee with a smile and that is not Come here. 
thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, push all the fun buttons, including the little notification bell so you don't miss our finale of this series as we launch into the universe with Ellen's song, Stargazing.